I want to talk to you about parent objects in GameMaker. This is part 13 of a series that I'm doing. If you haven't watched the other videos, don't feel like you have to, uh, because we're just going to get right into this. Um, so we have, uh, we have this object solid here, and uh, of course if we make it visible, you'll be able to see when we relaunch the game, that's what we're using for collision here. Uh, when this is invisible, we relaunch the game. Uh, yeah, so... It's still there, you just can't see it. Now, all of that's being done with Object Solid. So if I open the room, you can see uh, here it is right here. Now, I have these two objects. One's an object box, and the other is an object chair. And uh, these are actual objects. These are not, uh, these are not tiles. I do have another uh, two boxes over here, but these are tiles. And I'm making it collidable using these Object Solids. Now I'm just setting the foundation for something. These are two actual objects, and I have the sprites right over here. Now, um, I want the player to collide with this box and this chair just like he would an object solid. So I'm going to make this object solid visible just for the sake of demonstrating this video. So when I run the game, obviously, uh, I can collide with the red square, the object solid. I can't collide with the chair or the box here. But we're going to make it to where I can, uh, but we're going to do it in a very efficient way. So in my object player, obviously, I can only collide with object solids. Now, I could code for everything I want to collide with. I could add that in this code, but that would be so inefficient. So what I'm going to do is go to my object chair, and I'm going to go to parent, and then I'm going to select here where it says no object. I'm going to select object solid. What that's going to do is make the object chair function just like the object solid. So now when I go over here, I'm colliding with the chair. Now I still need to do that to the box. But basically the, ga the game is going to see this chair just like object solid. And what's cool is you can even build on top of everything object solid does. Uh, and I'll show you more of that here in a second. I'm going to do the same thing for object box. Now my box and my chair is going to be collidable, which is really cool. So that is a, an efficient way. The alternative would have been coding all of that, and uh, we're just we're just not about that life. Now um, these, uh, when it comes to parents and children objects. Uh, they can inherit events. So in my object solid, just for demonstration, I'm going to add an event, and I'm going to add a mouse left pressed. So in other words, when we click the red square, I'm going to say show message, you clicked me, exclamation mark. Now when I run the game, and I click on this red square, it's going to say you clicked me. Now when I click on the chair, it's also going to do that. Why? Because it's going to do everything that Object Solid does. Now, we can, uh, we can disable this by going to our object chair, for example. And you can see right here, it's kind of faded out this left pressed. If you double click it, it's going to show you the code. Uh, it's going to show you the code on Object Solid right here. I, we can't write anything in here. Notice the little lock symbol right here. If we wanted to change this specifically for Object Chair, we would have to say Add Event. Uh, mouse, and we'd have to add our own left pressed, and it would overwrite whatever uh, object solid is doing. Now when we run the game, and we click on chair, nothing happens, even though we can still collide. If we click the box, okay, it's still going to show a pop-up, because we would have to do, you know, add, a, add an event on object box as well. So, uh, now we can do anything in here. Now let's say we wanted to add code to left press, but we wanted to keep what Object Solid was doing. We want to keep that pop-up, but we want to add more code on top. Uh, well, in that case, you would just say event under slash inherited with these two parentheses here. And, uh, and then we could say, um, you know, I don't know, uh, show message. Here's another message. Now when we run the game, it's going to show... If we click Object Solid, one message, you click me. If we click the chair, you click me, click OK, here's another message. So as long as you have Event Inherited, um, it's going to do everything Object Solid does, plus uh, it's going to show message right here. So that's how this works. If we go to Object Solid, we can see if we open the Parent tab right here, 
uh, all the children of this object, which is our chair and our box. So this is just some of the things that you can do uh, when it comes to parent and children object. It's very cool, um, can make things a lot more efficient. You know, variables will also carry over. If I did a create event and I said, um, you know, <clears throat> my variable, or yeah, my variable equals, and we'll just do it as a string, uh, hello world. And then uh, if we go to like object box, and now you can see we have a create event, but that's being inherited from the object solid. But let's say add event in our box now, and we're gonna say mouse right press. So when we right click the, the box, show message my variable. And what's gonna happen when we right click the box? You guessed it, hello world. When we right click the object solid, nothing happens. When we right click the chair, nothing happens because this is exclusive to object box, but it's inheriting these variables. So yeah, it can get a little bit mind bending, but it is super cool. And I want to encourage you to use this stuff to your advantage to make your code and make your game more efficient. That's all I got for you today. Follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash wizardy. I'm on x, x.com slash wizardy. Also have a discord. All of that is in the description of this video. Thank you.